Now, the military operation against anti-government activists in eastern Ukraine looks set to continue. The country's president, Petro Poroshenko, has decided not to extend the ceasefire, which expired several hours ago. Our very own RT's Maria Fenoshino will be joining me live later on with the details. Right now, though, Martin McCauley is a commentator on Russian affairs. He thinks that nothing short of a direct deal between Kiev and anti-government fighters will bring peace to the region. President Poroshenko needs to uh, form the government uh, and get elections and get uh, uh, the Ukraine as a normal state. Uh, the economy is in a very bad state uh, and he needs uh, peace at this time. He needs to resolve this problem. His task is to ensure peace, to negotiate an agreement, some type of deal whereby uh, both sides, the anti-government forces and the Ukrainian army, cease offensive uh, action so that uh, peace can reign in that area, and then gradually uh, this area can come back to, to a normal situation. Uh, Kiev has to decide what the status of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts will be. Foreign Affairs Analyst Naboja Malic joins me now to discuss Poroshenko's decision not to extend the truce in eastern Ukraine. Thank you very much for being with us, as always. Now, Thanks for how me. do you think the European leaders feel about Poroshenko's decision, considering their peace efforts uh, when the truce was in effect? Um, I think this is entirely expected. I suspect that something like this might have ha would happen uh, following the signing of the deal with the European Union. President Poroshenko's speech tonight was a warmongering one. He essentially promised a war till the final liberation of Ukraine. Uh, and he promised to hunt down all of those he called bandits and marauders. So uh, there's, there was not a single conciliatory note in it. Uh, it's very disappointing from a standpoint of reasonable people, but I don't think for a second that the European Union wasn't expecting this. Now, Ukraine's president also said that there could still be a ceasefire if anti-government activists follow his peace plan. Is this really a possibility at this point? Uh, not in the least. Uh, his proposal was not a peace plan. It was essentially a demand for unconditional surrender, offering zero guarantees to the people fighting for their self-determination that uh, they would have any of their uh, legitimate demands met by the government in Kiev. Uh, there's absolutely no chance for the rebels to take the so-called peace plan into advisement, let alone uh, consideration. Now, uh, the United States always vocal about the situation. The State Department said about the ceasefire even before Poroshenko's statement. Let's listen to what Jen Psaki had to say. Whether to extend the ceasefire is a decision that Ukraine and only Ukraine will make, and we'd certainly support uh, the decision, uh, whatever decision that they make. Um, but it takes two to implement a ceasefire. There are steps that we've long been calling for that are a part of uh, what President Poroshenko has been calling for that uh, Russia uh, has not done. Now, they have taken some steps that um, have been um, positive steps uh, moving forward, but uh, there's a great deal more uh, that they need to do in order to de-escalate the situation. Now, it seems that uh, Washington is putting the blame of all of this on Russia, as they've been doing for quite some time. What else does Washington want Russia to do? Moscow has already invited Ukrainian guards and OSCE staff to be stationed at sites on the border. What else needs to be done? Well, um, I don't think Washington will stop blaming Russia until the very last person refusing to recognize a Nazi Ukrainian state uh, is either dead or imprisoned. I, I think uh, the whole process has been geared towards blaming Russia for uh, the National Guard murdering people opposed to the, opposed to the junta. Uh, honestly, Russia isn't really involved in this. Uh, th this is between the, the junta in Kiev, the people in Donbass, and then the Western powers backing the junta in Kiev. I find the, um, the whole thing of, you know, this is Ukraine's decision and will respect it, extremely cynical because Ukraine's decision in November was not to sign a deal with the EU and the United States and the EU did not respect that in fact they they basically set their puppets forth to take over power in the February coup so uh, this is just extreme cynicism. Now uh, we've heard from the president Poroshenko he says that his forces would never attack his own civilians in residential areas so if this is the case who could be behind the bombing in these residential areas we've heard from eyewitnesses who's, who say it is the Ukrainian government doing the bombing. 
Well, somebody's obviously lying. If President Poroshenko is making a statement that is obviously not true on its face, then I think it's obvious who is lying. Um, if we have documented instances of Ukrainian troops, troops loyal to either the government in Kiev or the oligarchs or the right sector leaders, they're all on the same side. If we have documented instances of them bombing civilians and, and murdering innocents, then I don't see why we should take President Poroshenko at his word. All right. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Foreign affairs expert Naboja Malich, thank you for being with us here on RT. Now, a 